people thank you all for coming out tonight uh, thank you for braving the cold dark freezing stormy Chicago spring <laughs> oh, what a wonderful city for seasonal depression right <laughs> for seasonal depression not for having it <laughs> my name is Tuxford Turner and I would like to start by addressing the elephant in the room by playing a little game with you all okay are you on the mood for a little game show moment Excellent, okay. I'm gonna need you all to like say the phrase of the show with me, all right? You know it, you've been saying it your whole lives. Okay, ready? Guess my, come on, you know it, you know it, say it with me. Guess my gender! Yeah. Hello, hello. Welcome to Guess My Gender, the game you've been playing every day since you were born. <laughs> My name is Tuxford. I will be your host and your prime subject for today. Uh, a little bit about me, I have scapula length hair. I hail from the great American <laughs> Midwest. Hey, <laughs> laughing at my haircut. I, uh, I took my sister's Barbies when she got bored of them at the age of six, and my genitals protrude from my body. <laughs> All right, so one of you lucky contestants might be going home with $10,000 and a kiss on the cheek. If you can, guess my gender! Yeah! Which one of you wants to play, all right? You can't, if you already know, you're not allowed to guess, okay? A complete stranger. I need a complete stranger anywhere, anywhere. I've given you some misdirections, potentially. Uh, let's see, someone who looks a little bit less like they know what they're doing. <laughs> anyone at all, anyone at all. No, okay, we'll go over here, we'll go over here. Yes, congratulations! Oh, you did it! However, in today's day and age, the only way to win Guess My Gender is not to play. So you did fail. <laughs> yes. Anyone who didn't participate in today's game, uh, please do not see me after the show. My bank account is overdrawn and I have chapped lips. So, <laughs> can't give you either things I promised. Um, I am non-binary, which means that I don't associate with either side of the gender spectrum. I like to live in the juicy gray stuff right in the middle, you know, uh, and it is a gender identity that is meant to confuse, okay? I don't know if any of you here are friends with any Fox News pundits, potentially. <laughs> yeah? Oh, woo? Okay, I won't go over here then. Um, <laughs> if you are, please don't let them know this, but confusion is a number one tenant of the non-binary agenda. All right, if you're feeling confused sitting here today going, what's going on there? We got you. If you find yourself in a feminist bookstore in the morning, you are far gone, all right? <laughs> you're ours. <laughs> um, it is a flavor of trans identity. It's my favorite flavor. It just sparkles and delights the tongue. Uh, and uh, I like to explain it to people as Neapolitan ice cream, right? Are we familiar with Neapolitan ice cream? Yes? Uh, yes, okay. We all, we all had elementary school ice cream parties in second place. I love that. Uh, if I'm explaining non-binary identities as a Neapolitan ice cream, right, it's neither the strawberry nor the chocolate of the Neapolitan, all right? It's the, uh, the soupy sludge right at the end when it's all melted and you've stirred it around in your little bowl and you're guzzling it down your delicious little gullet. <laughs> Somewhere right in the middle. And it is a brand of trans identity, and it is confusing, and I'm aware of that, and I really wanna be sympathetic to people and a hold space for conversation like this right here today. Because I struggle with it even, you know? And if I'm struggling with it, I can't expect someone else not to struggle with it, you know? It's a nice somber moment. I love when people give me like a little gentle head nod. That's beautiful. <laughs> I'm like, we're gonna take a second to learn something, okay? <laughs> I had to sit and cry in the back of a sex and gender class, and now you do too! <laughs> um, it is confusing though because, you know, I, I didn't even feel comfortable using trans to identify myself until fairly recently. Because as we understand trans, the prefix trans, we are continuing to learn prefixes, yay. The prefix trans, right, means to move across something, like a transatlantic flight. Like you're going from one side of the Atlantic to the other, right? Like, uh, hubby, I'm catching a flight out of New York City at 6 a.m. and I'll be in Paris in time for croissants, right? 
<laughs> transatlantic flight. The goal is to get <laughs> across the Atlantic. Now, I like thought about that, and for a long time I was like, oh, I don't know, okay, uh, I don't know if I'm quite transatlantic trans. I don't, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I'm not really trying to, trying to do that. And I had to sit for a long time. I realized I don't identify as transatlantic trans, but I do identify as Amelia Earhart trans. <laughs> right? Yeah? Which is where, uh, instead of just going right across, you're like, hmm, ah, I've done that. I could do that anytime. I said, I'm not really feeling it. Instead, I'm going to try and go around the whole world. <laughs> I'm going to get horribly lost somewhere in the middle and eaten by giant crabs. <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, I want to know what I'm working with here, okay? So I can tailor my jokes to be a little more, <laughs> a little more teachy or a little more chill. Um, uh, what's our audience like? Uh, do we have anyone here who identifies as queer, part of the LGBTQ plus spectrum? <laughs> woo woo! Gen you can give it up a little bit more. It's like, yeah, <laughs> you're like, give me two months. June comes, I will be pumped about it. <laughs> do we have anyone who identifies as cis or straight? Woo! Muted claps, you're like, I am aware of the world's social order. <laughs> I don't want to highlight myself, and good for you. But I'm going to give you 10 seconds right now to celebrate yourself, okay? I want you to just like actually clap for yourself for being cis and straight. It's just who you are. So go ahead, clap, clap. <laughs> no, you thought I was going to be mean to you, but I'm not. I was actually being nice. This is it. This is it. This is the only chance you get. And uh, do I have anyone who identifies as like not nowhere, neither of those, somewhere, some gushy, gushy, somewhere, somewhere else? Anyone all? <laughs> yeah? Excellent. Sorry, hon, you belong in the first group. <laughs> that's it. That's all. <laughs> we can hang out. We can, we can have a little uh, theory conversation after the show. I, I know you. <laughs> uh, I, uh, um, I also would like to ask. Uh, did anyone who clapped in the first group get a little bit queerer during this old happening we had, the little pandemic? <laughs> yes, yeah. We all sat very still <laughs> with nothing but two bottles of wine a day and Instagram and just sort of let our minds run wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I also, I too got a lot queerer during the pandemic. Right? I started to grow my hair out. Things started sort of falling into place. Uh, I was also publicly outed by my friend Amani who is here tonight. <laughs> I don't know if she's ever heard me do this bit, but she's hearing it now. I was publicly outed by my friend Imani. It's okay, I'm very happy about it. I'm laughing about it. And she's an amazing producer, and she asked me if I would be interested in hosting a non-binary variety show. <whistles> yeah. I was like, cool, that sounds good. I would love to like lift up the community, get out of my apartment, maybe not drink two bottles of wine for one day. <laughs> and I went ahead and did it. I did not expect every single adult that I had ever met in my whole life to watch the full two and a half hour unedited cut on Facebook, okay? I didn't, but they did. And so now everyone knew who I was. But it's great, because I just like had to, I got to skip over all that and be like, yeah, I hosted that thing. You know what's up with me, right? <laughs> I feel like everyone's like really nervous for me. They're like, was it okay? It was okay. <laughs> Um, but things start sort of falling into place when you start living your truth, right? Like, I had this problem. I had this curse. I call it a curse. I used to call it a curse at the time. I'm um, starting, to, starting to be like, oh, it was maybe a little pleasant. The issue was, no matter how old I was, no matter where I was living in the world, no matter who cut my hair, every haircut I ever got made me look like a 12-year-old lesbian. <laughs> Which is which is not what you want when you're trying so desperately to convince everyone that you're a 17-year-old young man. You know? <laughs> like, I need to attract the ladies. I'm going to put my elbows out a little bit, you know? <laughs> so I was walking around looking like a 12-year-old lesbian. It also didn't help that I wore suits, tweed suits with <laughs> elbow patches to school every <laughs> single day. So if you caught me, like, running late from class from the band room, you know, you'd be like, who's that blur of Ellen DeGeneres running through the hallways? <laughs> And it took until coming out of the pandemic to realize that, no, it's not that I've always looked like a 12-year-old lesbian. It's that I've always been a 12-year-old <laughs> lesbian. And as I age, I might become a 13, 14-year-old <laughs> lesbian. Maybe by the time I reach retirement and can settle down in my cottage home in the woods with my sapphic lover and our collection of a thousand porcelain cats, 
I'll be 18 and able to buy pipe tobacco at the corner store down the street. <laughs> I've also started using gender neutral pronouns after coming out of the pandemic, they, them, I also like my name as much as possible. Mostly as a signaling tactic because I don't really like having to do a whole diatribe on gender with groups of strangers except for you all, I guess. <laughs> Um, but it's been going really lovely. You know, you get mixed responses, right? You're like, they, them. And you get some people that are like, hell yeah, dude, that's awesome. And then you get some people that are like, I don't get it. You're three people, you know? <laughs> I'm like, a little bit. But, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, but I actually got a, I, I, I got a lot of practice telling people information about myself that they either did not want to hear or did not believe was scientifically possible for a couple years before I started doing this. Because back in... 2016, after a lot of pain and suffering and consideration and conversations with my friends and my family, I officially came out publicly as lactose intolerant. Wow. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Brave, takes a lot of bravery, you know? Uh, but I do experience my relationship with lactose a lot like I experience my relationship with gender, right? Like, I don't necessarily believe that human beings should have either of them. I don't necessarily think that it's good for us, but I also don't necessarily want to take it away from everyone, right? I want everyone to be able to enjoy whichever part of their ne little Neapolitan ice cream that they want, and maybe bubble a little bit in their tum-tum, in the same way that I want everyone to be able to like enjoy parts of masculinity, you know? Like, I would never want to take away from myself or others things like fishing with a paternal figure, or, uh, or, or trying to fix something and breaking it halfway through, <laughs> you know, or being called dude and, and bro and, and fisting sports bros in a locker room, <laughs> you know. Fist bumping, specifically. I am trying to get, trying to get away from masculinity, not elbow deep in it. <laughs> Um, but, you know, walking around as myself has also provided a lot of, of interesting perspective. The world sees me a lot differently. Uh, if I come out of my apartment with a full face of makeup, kind of looking like I am right now, people are like, oh, look at that fun feminine thing. That looks like a cool woman it being, you know? <laughs> if I come out of my apartment with no makeup, my hair up, uh, the world views my gender as tired, you know? <laughs> it was actually like really, really warm and cozy inside the first time I went to work and I had been coming to work for long enough with makeup on that <laughs> I came without makeup one day and my boss pulled me aside and was like, hey, are you, are you doing okay? <laughs> I was like, no, but I'm, al <laughs> I'm also not doing okay when I'm wearing makeup. I'm just, today I'm not wearing makeup. <laughs> Um, my mom also experiences my gender a lot like her relationship with me and lactose in that she just like can't ever remember it, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like she, she's doing her best and like I love her. She's so supportive. Like don't get me wrong. I don't want to like I'm not trying to put my mom in the spot here. She's super supportive. I'm really lucky. She just forgets. <laughs> like like we're sitting at dinner and she's like, oh, that was such a good meal. Like let's get a little like cheesecake a la mode after the meal. Would that be good for you? I want to treat you. And I'm like... I actually can't, I can't, um, I can't eat that, Mom. And she goes, oh, oh, no, oh, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, can we, uh, maybe they have uh, a pie or something. I'm like, it's toy, it's really, it's really okay, Mom. She does the exact same thing when she signs off on phone calls with me, right? She'll go, hey, all right, I, I love you, little dude. I, I mean, I, uh, person, uh, <laughs> They, I, I, and I'm like, Mom, <laughs> it's okay. I've told you a million times. You can offer me cheesecake, and you can call me dude. I just, <laughs> I just also have a right to be like, man, eh, not today. <laughs> <laughs> she also overcompensates. Uh, both my parents overcompensate when I go home for the holidays. <laughs> like, uh, I always go home, and there's lactate milk in the fridge. <laughs> lactate milk <laughs> is the number one lie of the 21st century. <laughs> It still hurts. I don't get it. They just crumble up pills into it? Like, what is that? I don't know. <laughs> it's, I'm like, this is not helpful, but I really I appreciate the gesture in the same way, like, I, I come down Christmas morning and, like, my stocking is full of, like, unicorn toys and frozen toys. <laughs> and, like, unicorns, 
Cute, fun, love that. I got like a flying unicorn this past year. It stretched it out, launched it. Like, pff, that's a great like one dollar like feminine like uh, appreciation gift. You know, like I, <laughs> I love that. Frozen. I have never expressed an interest in the movie Frozen. I in fact think the plot moves a little bit too quickly for my taste. <laughs> My parents were like, yeah, I talk to love this. They got me like a plug-in like nightlight projector that projects Anna and Elsa onto my ceiling. <laughs> They're like, this will be fun at parties. I'm like, no. And then I, last year I got like a little glow bracelet crown, frozen crown that I put on. It gave me headaches. It was beautiful. <laughs> I really loved it. Um, <laughs> I also experience street harassment a little bit differently now. It's a little more interesting than it used to be. <laughs> it used to be just like getting called faggot on a bus, you know? <laughs> it's okay, I'm joking about it. It's, it's healthy, we're good. Um, but now I get all of these different, like really fun, interesting little harassments that I never really expect, okay? There's different categories of them. My favorite, by far, is what I call Doppler harassment, okay? If you uh, weren't distracted by heat stroke in your tweed suits in high school, you might remember that dop the Doppler effect is what sound waves do when they compress when something's moving really fast right next to you, right? It's the reason that emergency vehicles go, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. <laughs> Doppler harassment is similar to Doppler effect, except it's when a Ford Flex rolls up on you real fast. <laughs> And a dude leans out the window and goes, hey, hottie, how you doing? Oh, shit, dude, sorry, I thought you were a girl. <laughs> and I love that. I'm like, that dude is not getting fisted by his sports friends tonight. <laughs> Um, my favorite harassment that's happened to me by far, though, my favorite harassment. What a <laughs> fucked up. Ooh, that's a fucked up sentence. Um, but it was. It was my favorite harassment, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> I was sitting on a train in the winter in Chicago, so I was wearing a nice little puffy coat. I was wearing a, a beanie, like a crunchy granola beanie that made me feel like a lesbian, you know? And I was reading a book called Transgender History by Susan Stryker. Great book. Check it out. Highly recommend. little plug there for Susan. <laughs> Uh, transgender history, and this door next to me, while the train is moving, the door next to me that says, do not use this door, you might die, opens up, right? And a man walks out. <coughs> now, never a good sign. Anyone who passes within the two feet of death in between two trains has an agenda, all right? A couple years ago, I was sitting with my tiny friend, Jamie, <laughs> and I was sitting with Jamie, and the door opens up, and this small white dude in a long coat walks through the door, and he stomps down, and he posts up, hands on both of the poles, and he goes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and Jamie looks up at me, she goes, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna die. <laughs> and I was, in that moment, I accepted my fate. He was just like trying to get people to follow his SoundCloud, but I, he could have had a bomb, <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> you never know. Uh, but today, the door opens up, and a man walks through, and he has sort of a Midwestern tactic of hitting on me, right? He walks up to me, stands next to me, and he goes, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am, how, uh, how are you doing today? Ma'am, how, how are you? How, how are you doing today? I'm also Midwestern, so I want to be polite. So I look up from my book, and I say, hi, thank you. I'm, I'm doing all right. Thanks. And he goes, oh, <laughs> OK, that's great. I hope you keep having a good day, man. <laughs> and he goes and he sits down in the seat right across from me. I've started a collection. <laughs> 20 seconds later, 20 seconds later, like not, I'm not exaggerating. It maybe was less than 20 seconds later. The door opens up again. Another man walks through. Now, I don't know if the incels updated their playbook and I missed it or something, <laughs> but this guy had the same tactic. So he walks up, sits down next to me, bold, and he says, hey there, uh, Ma'am, how are you? Uh, how are you doing today? How's it going, ma'am? Ma'am, how's it going? I'm like, come on, I'm trying to learn. <laughs> I look up for my book and I say, I'm doing all right, thanks. And he goes, Oh, that's good. That's good. That's really good. Uh, I hope you have an excellent day. <laughs> he gets up. He goes, sits down across from the man next to me. My collection has raised to two. They start chopping it up. They become fast friends. I've just created a lifelong friendship. That's beautiful. You know? 
Yeah. Only in the Midwest. <laughs> Only in the Midwest. You surprise someone with your transness and they friendship. Their friendship just blossoms out of it. You know, you go down to Florida, you surprise someone with your transness, they kill you, get away with it. Now, uh, I want to share, share some tips. And I don't necessarily condone harassing trans people in public, <laughs> to be clear. But, uh, but there's a lot of us walking around. So I just want to give some like handy, out-of-pocket advice for how to identify trans people in public. There's three tenets. Number one, if they look like a 12-year-old lesbian, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be talking to that person because it might be a 12-year-old lesbian. <laughs> Tenant two, <laughs> if they have a three-letter name, chances are it's a trans person. I'm seeing some nodding. There's a couple of us here. Raise your hand if you're here. You have a, a three-letter name and you're trans. There we go. There's a smattering in the audience. I've got at least five here. <laughs> a sample size. Now, this is like a 75% chance. It rockets up to 95 if there's an X, a Y, a Z in the name. I know a couple of the people here who raised their names. We've all got Xs in our names. Number three, and this is maybe the most important. If they're reading a book called Transgender <laughs> History. <laughs> They're probably trans! Okay? I'm just, it's basic context clues, all right? Basic context clues. So I beseech you, go out into the wild, <laughs> go meet people. If they have three letters in their name, consider whether or not it's polite to ask them if they're trans. <laughs> and then maybe you ask them, you might learn a little something. My name is Tuxford Turner. Uh, take you off. <laughs> <laughs>